Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 148 of Trials and Trebuchets. I'm your dungeon master, Luke, and joining me are my players whose names are... Hi, my name is Ben, and I play the level 7 gnome wizard, Windsor Wallaby, along with his cuddly little companion, Mr. Wiggles. Meow. Hello, everyone. It is me, Carla, and I play the level 7 tiefling roguelock, Integrity I, the magic science guy. <laughs> What? I completely Bill, Bill, lost Bill, my track Bill. of how that goes, but <laughs> hi. <laughs> oh, hi, I'm Sarah, I and I play Mira Marchand, the level 7 half elf bard. Mira's got a sneaky tentacle arm and is learning how to fix a body and just helped kill a spider thing. I am now renaming her to Doc Ock. Oh, oh fuck you. Yeah. Right, it wasn't that good. <laughs> no, I know, I told Peter. you. Hello, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Sam, and I play the level 7 human sorceress, Sarah Nep Sunderman. We have bested the machine, and now we must yes. best other students. Time to beat them up. <laughs> yes, immediately, right now. We Actually, still haven't fought children. kids, if you think about it. Yeah. Yay. And last time on Trials and Trebuchets, the students, three quarters fraught with physical exhaustion, dueled against the arachnid automaton Cax and its operator, Mr. Katanko. Mm -hmm. Integrity was immobilized momentarily. Mira managed to easily motivate the team. Serenep schemed to steal a controller, and Winsler got webbed while trying to win. Aww. Uh, after successfully stealing Mr. Katanko's controller, Cax Automaton was deactivated, and Team Ogresnot advanced to the next <laughs> rounds of duels, winning a hefty 429 gold pieces. 496? In the process. Okay. 429. 429. Why did you get 496 wow. from? That was an so attempt to increase the really amount been... of money. Okay. Inflation. Right. That's not how you haggle. Yes. That's not That's how not you how haggle. You, you don't haggle against me, the DM. You haggle against characters, please. Um, <laughs> Do you? So, we see the scene uh, on this late autumn day, now approaching the beginning of the winter. You four, or the three of you, Integrity Idleberry, Mira Marchand, and Sarah Nep Sinderman, can have taken this uh, prize money in some fashion, either in the cup in within which it was presented, if you're feeling like that, or you could take it in a bag. Either option is present to you and you can make your way off of the field quickly Winsler wallaby you would all know this is inside of the little preparatory room uh that you had kind of gotten ready in for like 12 seconds before the duel started uh Winsler, i do not know if you're doing anything but i do know that your parents had gone and spoken to you uh, a similar thing is happening to the three of you out in the kind of breezeway on this main floor of the evocation building Integrity, your mother is here. Uh, she seems to have taken, she seems, seems repossessed the children uh, from Delnus, who was watching them during the duel uh, while you were all busy. Uh, the children, Integrity, are very excited, uh, partially with you and how cool it was. Integrity, it was so cool. You got like, boom, hit. But then, and like, it looked like you were frozen in place, but then you like it shrugged it off like it was not a big deal. And you got like laser eyed a bunch of times and it was not anything, <laughs> your younger brother says. And Enora looks to you, Serenap, and goes, and you flew around and it was really cool. Um, just generally uh, expressing admiration and awe for the two of you and your prowess in uh, magical combat. Um, <laughs> Mira, your parents approach you and your mother. It will look very worried. Uh, if you recall, you had been hit with uh, the aforementioned uh, laser eyes a couple of times during the duel. Uh, and yeah, I got a few hits in. Yeah. Uh, and she will say, are you doing okay? Is everything, what, what? I didn't know that it was going to be this extreme. I knew that it was duels and everything, but, are, are... and she like kind of is looking you up and down as if like, I don't know if this is a thing that happened to Mira as a child, but when you go out and, like, get a hurt and come back and tell your parents that you're hurt and they, like, inspect you head to toe <laughs> for injuries. Oh, for sure. Okay. It seems to be what your mother and, uh, to a lesser extent, your father is doing. Mm -hmm. um, and you might see Mira standing a 
few feet back, like kind of kind of off, like, ooh, I don't super want to go in and talk to Mira right now while her parents are there. You see Delnis standing there a bit hesitantly, uh, nothing else really going on. On. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm absolutely putting on, like, a very, like, oh, I'm totally fine. Like, I'm standing up as tall as I can, like, definitely smiling, like, very much trying to not show that I was hit with laser eyes, and I'll, like, give <laughs> her a wave, and just very much not wanting to show my parents that any damage has been <laughs> done here. And, and remind me, how much damage had been done? How are you looking hit point-wise? Um, I have 18 out of 41 hit points, so Ooh. about just under half. Just under half. Um... Yeah, okay. I think at that point, I don't think you would be overly haggard in a, in a way that you would have to be, like, disguised. Like, if you had, like, less than 10, I'd be like, oh, make a deception check. But I feel like you are in a good sorts uh, of okay. position here. Um, could the three of you out here quickly make perception checks for me sure. before we carry on with other things? What is that? Oh, bad. Uh, that oh, is a no. six plus three is a nine. I got an eight. Oh. Uh, my perception is a 15 plus two, so a 17. <laughs> nice. In that case, uh, m- integrity, you are, your attention taken by your younger siblings who for a moment think you're kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> and, and then, of course, it. yes. And then Mira, it, it's just kind of like this balancing act of like, oh, I'm super fine. And that was really easy. And isn't this such a safe school? And uh, <laughs> balancing that with your parents and then like, also trying to, I don't know if you're trying to pull Delnus into this, but that kind of situ- social situation uh, it does take your attention uh, for the most part. You two do notice that some people are arriving, like more spectators, both uh, visitors to Wildcliff and students themselves are arriving uh, just in time for the next duel that's about to go down. Um, but Serenapth, on top of this... Mm-hmm. Uh, after Ernest has, like, f- or Anora has freaked out about how you, like, levitated around and were flying for all uh, reports, uh, you peek over th- uh, to the other side of the field where Mr. Katanko had gone, and you see that four students are kind of gathered around him, and not, like, giving him, like, uh, ah, oh, that sucks kind of talk, but, like, a well, that's kind of disappointing because, you know, you're an adult and uh, they were first years uh, talk. It seems to be like his his actual students kind of giving you're him a hard a bunch time of kids. about it. Oh yeah, it, it, it's his four students giving him a hard time about his performance against first years. And he's uh, defending himself in good spirits, uh, but seems to be like kind of worried about that controller and if it was damaged or anything. So the four of, or the five of them, uh, accompanied by a quick silver finished egg. Uh, automaton uh, that's floating a couple inches off of the ground, uh, kind of walk out of the evocation department uh, against the grain of the few people coming in. Um, There's some, there's a halfling, there's a couple, there's a human, there's a high elf, there's a turtle, which is a turtle person. (gasps) Those are his four students. I'm sure that means something to some people somewhere, but uh, they're background characters for right now, and they (laughs) walk out with their uh, mentor. Uh, Anyways, are the four of you in the few moments here going to do anything, give your parents any, say anything specific to your parents, uh, interact with one another uh, or the other NPCs, students, things in this world? Do you tell me what happens now? The world's your little uh, magical oyster, as it were. Um, do I see, like, Angelica or Philip around? Mmm, you do not see Angelica. Oh, yeah, right. She's like, it's been a while since we <laughs> talked about Angelica. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's been like a while since we recorded. I'm so sorry. You do not see Angelica here, uh, nor do you see Philip, I don't think. No, he wouldn't be here. He would be um, elsewhere doing things likely with his parents right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you And in fact, you don't see any of the other first years, really, which is kind of shitty because this was like the first year duel. So you guys won without any of the other first years having seen it. I don't know if that's a sour note I for mean, you. one of the first year groups Maybe isn't even better here yet. Because so. then like the fact that we beat this robot's going to be a huge deal and there's going to mm-hmm. be like rumors about the cool mm-hmm. shit we did, but nobody will know. And we can Ew. have like a mystique about it. We can make up our own cool shit. It. You could. Yeah. Um, but... Is Serena, as you do look around for Philip and maybe Angelica, maybe she's better, uh, like that hope against hope, um, that she's like just fine. She recovered overnight and is just here to support her friend now. You do see that there are some both second years and third years showing up for duels. Um, 
it seems that if, if the schedules, the second years will go right now, and then the third years will go a bit after that. Hmm. Um, but we can get to that in a second. Is it, are any of the rest of you doing anything? I'm assuming she isn't here, but I, I wonder if Joan is anywhere in the crowd, because if she is, I want to shoot her a challenging look. Mm, make an investigation check quickly okay. for me, Mira. Um, is a 14 plus whatever my investigation is, which is a three, is a 17. A 17. Yes. Uh, a couple of blonde women in the crowd catch your eye, uh, but looking at them, they're either like, mm, that person, oh, like short, short blonde hair. Oh, no, that's not the right person. Oh, that's not the right person. Like three or four times. Um, and you do not seem to see her in the crowd. It seems, I, I think that a fair assumption would be, or something that might pop into your head would be, I don't, uh, maybe it's just that uh, scouting out the competition's not her kind of thing, right? That's fair. Yeah. In that case, I think that I'm just gonna like, just like focus back and like give Delness a smile where she is. Like she okay. can come over if she'd like, but it's not a like, get over here right now. You gotta <laughs> meet my parents right after this duel kind of situation. Just like, oh, hey, what's up? Uh, she will smile back tentatively and kind of like make a hand motion like as if, like, uh, do you want me to come over there right now? <laughs> kind of um, thing. I'll give her like a shaky thumbs up. I'm like, yeah, sure, you can. <laughs> okay. In that case, Delness will take a couple of hesitant steps and then confidently stride over to the th- group of you all, Amira, and stand not next to you, but near to you in a uh a manner that's not overly familiar in front of your parents, but still it indicates some sort of closeness between the two of you. (laughs) (laughs) And we'll say, that was a really good duel. Uh, Thanks. There were some super tough parts. I mean, not that tough. Obviously, it was pretty, pretty easy as far as fights go. And I, you know, I didn't really get hurt, but it was, it was still really fun. And so thanks for watching. Oh, um, uh, mom, dad. So I did mention to you that I have a girlfriend and that her name is Delness Raythrin. And this is her right here, right now. Um, so parents, Delness, Delness, parents, hi. (laughs) Uh, And Delness kind of like shrinks a bit and like raises one hand and goes, Oh, hi, it's nice to meet you. Uh, And your parents, your mother will put on a charming smile and your father will reach one hand. He like kind of like pulls his sleeve up and like reaches a handout in like a formal kind of like business meeting way. And will say, oh, it's a it's a pleasure to meet you. My name's uh, Iverin uh, Marchand and this is my wife. And your mother will introduce herself and say, my name's Emma. It's a pleasure to meet you as well, Delness. Delness is really smart. She was the top student in the third year. <laughs> uh, your father goes, that's amazing. Uh, uh-huh. is now, uh, have you been helping Mira with her studies? Uh, or And uh, Delness will kind of like look over at you and go, uh, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. All the time. Our studies are in different departments, but she's really smart. And so she also helps me study all the time mm-hmm. also. Like but gen- if my grades weren't good, things. it wouldn't be her fault because our studies are in different departments. But she's very smart and helpful. Also smart. <laughs> <laughs> so the real question is, does Delness actually help you study or is that literally no. never? Okay, make a deception check. I was, okay, good. I was like, there's no uh, way. <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay, that's a bad roll again. Oh, that is no. a four plus seven, which is an 11. Um, roll with advantage because Delness is helping you. Oh, out. true. Uh, that is an eight plus seven, which is a 15. Okay. Slightly better. Um, Slightly better. Your father nods in like acceptance and your mother, a much more knowing kind of nod and will shoot you a, a quick look, Mira, uh, but nod all the same and say, <laughs> it's very nice to meet you. Uh, I'm, I, I'm, I, we saw you sitting in the stands and, and we, we didn't know why, I assumed you were just a student and we didn't know ex- exactly why you're here, but the, the assumption was that you might have known them. You were with, um, Amaret's children and everything like that. So it, it kind of made a lot of sense. And your mother, your mother, mother. your mother will look to <laughs> you, Mira, and will say, um, are you doing anything today? Uh, I know that you you kind of disappeared in the afternoon yesterday, but uh, oh. did you want to do anything with us today? Yeah, or? sure. Sorry, I was actually I was um I was with Delness. We were doing research for um a project that we're working on. Actually, oh, um, what is it? 
it is actually about um, we are researching different kinds of um, the powders and things like that. And we're doing some alchemy stuff, actually, and, and integrity. And, and my other friends also helped us out a lot. Your that father sounds will say, like you're making drugs. <laughs> your father was like, you're doing alchemy with powders and everything. Like, yeah. You know, and that's um, like an independent kind of thing. Oh, well, um, what's really cool about Wildcliff is that you can research stuff for class and like stuff for your schedules, but also if you're just interested in stuff, you can oh. just like research it for the love of learning and those kinds of reasons. And so it's kind of just one of those projects. We're not getting a grade for it or anything. It's just like, you know, uh, academics is cool because we're at a really academic school. <laughs> oh, yeah. And um, by the way, to add on to that, actually, it's not like <laughs> just completely independent. It's like... You can ask for help from people who knows what they're doing. Like, mm -hmm. so you don't have to worry about it being unsafe. Oh, yeah. There's like so many resources for um, not just mentorships, but also just um, assistance from other students. And so we were, you know, we were doing research together because it was like far, sort of a oh. fun date thing, but also it was an academic project. Um, mm. So, anyway, um, my point so is that I would love to, to hang out later today or something. Later today or right now, we could spend the entire day together. I mean, something like that would be pretty nice. Oh, um, yeah. We haven't spent definitely... any like one-on-one -on -one time that much together. There was that one night that you went and and said you were doing, you had to run out of the room around like midnight or something, and you were back like twenty minutes later. But and then, like we spent that that night after dinner together. But other than that, there wasn't oh. really, there hasn't been, we haven't done anything. Well, um, sure, I I can definitely show you around um other parts of the. You haven't been to the archives yet, have you? Um, oh I can, no, I we can spent all there. of yesterday in the archives, actually. Right, most of yesterday That's true. in the archives. And your father says um, the re the head archivist here is so is such a gentle, like so nice, and she, uh, oh Ava runs an absolute. Oh, are you? Do you like first name basis with her? Ava Redding. Oh yes, I go to the archives all the time, so I know Ava very well. Your father looks like please just punch and your mom uh her expression like loosens slightly right like the, <laughs> like okay Th that seems uh, fine right uh, that seems better uh winsler have you come from your uh cave of seclusion yet emerged from your uh, sad den of sadness <laughs> misery oh, misery yeah. i would say that you know interacting with the parents give mm -hmm. give them sort of like the bare minimum mm -hmm, wait till mm -hmm. they leave and then just like hop out of bed and like scuttle yes scuttle my way over to where yes. everyone else is okay still like Absolutely. an expression of like eh. If okay. that's a if that's a good way to put it, absolutely. Just a like a a, a sense of distaste, or like a bad taste in your mouth after that, right? Like that yeah. kind of uh, the feeling when you do something that you're so excited for that you you you're so hopeful that like I'm gonna do great, and then it's just bleh, flat, right? Like that flatness afterwards. Yeah. yeah. Um, Windler scuttles into the uh, corridor, the breezeway here to join the rest of you uh, as you have like make like idle chat and Serenath. Oh, Integrity Idleberry. Yes. Um, Sorry. So once Winsler is back um, with uh -huh. the group, um, mm. I'm going to ask, um, Serenip, Mira, and Winsler, is it fine if I take some money from uh, from, from the price? We got oh, yeah. money for winning that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we won um, 429 gold coins. So yeah, Winsler, like, largely because of your help. It was awesome. Oh yeah! Right, like, yeah. You did a wonderful. <laughs> he just kind of like lowers head his down. head at like the yeah. mention of that. Mm -hmm. um, I think Sarah Neff, like puts her hand on like his shoulder to be, just be like, "Hey, it sucks to like get kicked out of the competition," kind of thing. She has to bend momentarily. Down. Like yeah. she doesn't bend down. <laughs> she has to. She How does she reach? To. She's like a foot tall. <laughs> <laughs> how to talk to okay. short people <laughs> no okay so okay fine in that case but like she doesn't want to do it to be like a that whole like how to talk to short people thing but like yeah it's kind of like a like how you would do like if like if like, you're talking to a child if like a child was upset <laughs> you would kind of like like just kind of lean over just enough to like kind of like put your hand Absolutely. on their shoulder to be like uh, yeah, a reassurance I, I of some sort very normal yes be like i know i know you I know, I know it sucks getting knocked out or that kind of thing from that, but like genuinely, like if it wasn't for your help, we probably would not have won that. Meanwhile, while this is happening, Integrity's mm -hmm. like scuttling inside a bag full of coins, and I'm going <laughs> to yes. grab like a handful and count okay. it. 
uh, and I'm going to take How 10 much? gold coins. Okay. And then I'm going to throw it like towards my siblings. Yeah. And if anyone <laughs> asks, like looks at me and asks like, what the heck was that? Oh, um, where we're from, whenever we win something really big, we want to share that. And in order to attract abundance of it from from the gods and from nature, we throw it away and share that share that oh, share that um blessings <laughs> with others. Your brother, oh. as you throw coins at your younger siblings, your brother like flinches as you throw coins at his face, <laughs> and, and go. And then when you're giving the explanation, he's like, "What are you talking about?" Uh, but meanwhile, your sister is like scuttling, picking up every single one of those coins <laughs> before your brother can get a chance. Integrity. Um, and so while you all have this conversation, as you have this cup of gold, as Serenap the reassures Winsler, as Mira reassures her parents that she studies and does good in school, and look at all the opportunities I get here, um, <laughs> the more and more spectators and participants of duels yet to come today arrive in the evocation department. I think that Mira, you'll feel a quick tap on your shoulder oh, as someone behind will. you like taps on your shoulder. I will turn and look. Okay, you turn to see a uh, re- average height young man uh, with brown, curlyish hair. He has very, very nice eyes. Uh, the one uh, and only Bailey in blue uh, stands oh, yes. here before you. He's wearing dueling attire, uh, and the belt of his like uniform is cinched way too tight, so it almost makes his like it makes it look like he's almost wearing something that's like three sizes too big. Uh, like very, very oversized robes or uh, dueling attire. What's the what's Bailey Blue's team's sponsor that's on like the chest of this this this? Peter's thing? perfect pencils. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they're so perfect. They're number one pencils. Hey. Wow. <laughs> so perfect. Okay. Their number one is the tagline. It is yes, and the entire font is written as if it was just pencils laid out. It looks terrible. Um, <laughs> and he'll say. Mira. Oh, I'm now thinking, I know. Hi, Bailey. Great job on the duel. I wasn't here, but I heard you won. Mm, now yeah. I know that you've not been doing that much like planning committee work. I know it's like your uh, first year. It's super fine. You haven't been to any of like mm, the impromptu meetings that I've been calling, or like any of like the evening prep meetings, or any of the morning prep meetings. None of them at all, morning. actually. And I know that we didn't tell you about them, but, you know, I yeah. assumed you would, like, what hear about them from someone else. Meetings, Bailey? Oh, well, every morning in the, like, divination room, you know the one, the one where you all ambushed me. Uh, I've been, like, holding <laughs> uh, a little prep meeting for the planning committee, like, the, the, the planning committee, especially the people who are, like, helping a lot with Autumn's End planning, uh, who, like, specifically on the planning, on the planning committee, the, the Autumn's End <laughs> Festival Planning Committee committee. Those people have been meeting every morning and night in the divination building to like brainstorm ways to make the next day run smoother. Anyway, oh, I, I did give you a, I gave you a booth. Um, I, I've done planning yep, stuff. Um, you did, but you haven't been going to the meetings. Is my point? You haven't told. Okay, I okay, know, what, what, I know. What? I'm not holding it against you. I'm just letting uh, you know that you missed okay. all of them. Um, okay, what are you getting? My at, point Bailey? is, I have a duel in like pff, ten minutes, and so okay. If if you could, I would really appreciate it because, you know, you are a member of the planning committee and everyone's pulling their weight, Mira. Uh, there's yeah. a forum vendor forum going on over by, like, the planner research building. There's a nice little nook there where it's, like, not super trafficked or anything. And, like, they're doing a vendor forum where the vendors just have a couple of questions they wanted to ask. And, like, I can't be there and no one else in the planning committee is really good at answering questions on their feet other than like me and uh, probably you uh and because like i don't know you're Uh, good at this stuff um so since i'm busy and you've done barely anything i was (laughs) wondering if you could go over there and like take care of that so there's a bunch of angry vendors for stuff i had nothing to do i didn't say they were angry i did they're just meaning to like talk about the final two days kind of stuff those two day rushes any like minor hiccups Yeah, okay. just go and answer their you questions. You want me to do damage control for stuff? It's I, not didn't... Da- I didn't say it was damage okay. control. You're okay. the one saying that and putting that out into the world, Mira. <laughs> but I'm is it saying, true? 
I don't know. I'm not there. I haven't gone there. And maybe that's questions like, wow, why is this festival so great? Right. That's mostly what it is. Right. Right. And he'll Um, smile. He's kind of walking past you at this point, trying to escape this. And he's like, but you'll you'll take care of that. Right. I'm I keep like stepping in front of him as he's stepping away. Okay. And I'm like, Look, um, Bailey, I mm-hmm. I will go mm-hmm. to the forum and I will answer questions, oh. but uh, I would really um, appreciate a heads up about those uh, those meetings next time. Um, yeah. Luckily, you know, I, I I did talk to to Headmaster Crow about the the, the ball and all of that, so hopefully mm-hmm. he should be getting back to you on all of that too. What are you talking about? Oh, don't worry about it. All right, well, I'll be at the forum. Good luck on your duel, Bailey. <laughs> Can you make an intimidation check for me, Mira? Yes, what absolutely. The... They're gonna uh, girl boss and gaslight each other to oblivion. Five. Um, that is a seventeen. Okay, he stands there a bit gobsmacked uh, as you leave him, Mira, um, before one of his like fellow teammates wearing a Peter's Perfect Pencils uh, logo goes. Bailey, are you coming? And then he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, it is a gnome. Uh, and he'll <laughs> rush to catch up with them. Um, he is sweating profusely. He looks worried. There's a fear in his eyes, Mira. Um, and, and you approach, re-approach, uh, re-join uh, the larger group of parents and uh, your fellow uh, teammates. Mental oh, I hate that guy. I say to my friends. Every time I see him, he somehow gets more annoying. I know. He stinks uh, even more today. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully he loses his duel. Anyway. I mean, it'd be um, kind of fun to fight him. Here we go. Yeah, good point. Um, <laughs> anyway, I have to answer a bunch of questions from presumably angry vendors. So that's a thing I have to do now. Uh, Mom and dad, I would still love to hang out with all of you. After that, I have uh, event planning committee duties to do, though, um, because I'm in a lot of clubs that I'm very good at. Um, so that's a thing now also. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> you say bye. Uh, and are you walking away and I'm going skittering to away. Your... You're skittering <laughs> away. <laughs> um the other three of you, would you are you going to accompany Mira on this? Uh, or are you <laughs> you have other I mean, Jesus. wow. I mean, I, I hey, really... you guys gonna back okay. your friend up? I don't Ugh, really have anything else. I have else. stuff to do. Fa- I don't have anything <laughs> else family wise that I have to do. Correct. I already met up with Philip's family and we all hung out. My parents aren't here yet. So, mm-hmm. I mean, sure, I'll go for moral support. Hell yeah. Um, Hey, mom. Y- yes, integrity. Were you planning anything specific today or can I go with Mira? Um,. I don't have anything specific on my mind. Uh, I'm kind of getting a bit tired of everything. Like, there's not as much to do as I thought there would be to do on campus. So, um, I, we'll figure something out, though. Do you have any recommendations, fun places that I could, like, bring uh, bring the twins? Well, That hmm. they won't get lost or r- try to run away. Those kind of things. It was so nice. Th- integrity, thank you so much my dear for yesterday it was amazing to not have to like look out for them the entire day You're but welcome. today i but today i'll take them back and like you can just do your own thing and if you want to come spend time with us you can come spend time with us it would be great to spend time with you but we'll we'll figure something out okay, okay. and she'll like pat you on the shoulder um i had an absolute pleasure ple- <laughs> having a good time oh, hang on. I don't having, know. I can't speak. I'm having an absolutely great time. <laughs> I had an absolutely great time taking care of the kids. Um, they didn't mm-hmm. cause any trouble at all. Um, mm-hmm. I would recommend if you want to like go check out the plants at the greenhouse. They have some really okay. cool stuff there. Um, I really can't think of anything else that's kid friendly. We'll, we'll go to the greenhouses and then, like, uh, figure it out from there, okay? Thank you. <gasps> That's right. My plant. Um, and then she'll grab them by the hands, your t- t- twin siblings, and be like, all right, everybody, let's go, and, like, lead them away. And as they uh, trail off integrity, you hear Ernest going, she brought us to an estate, and there was a guy there who gave us anything we wanted. He was so cool, and he was really... F-. And then they leave. Um, and... 
the rest of you. So, Integrity, you're tagging along with Mira. Serenap, you're tagging along with Mira. Winsler. Integrity. Integrity. Yes. Um, do you do you know the way to the student store? Absolutely. They know me very well there. Because I've <laughs> always checked it out, but never really bought anything. I don't think I've ever <laughs> been there before. Could you point me in the direction? I'll try and meet up with everybody at the where whatever it is that Bailey asked Mira to do. <laughs> I I can go with you. I'm okay. not Yeah. So we can go meet them later afterwards. Mm-hmm. I probably mm-hmm. won't take that long. I just need to ask them like, like a question or two. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Serenov. They got the mention of like greenhouse and the stuff. Uh, Serenov just has a vision suddenly of like the giant fucking the tree. The, the yes. tree that it grew from tree. the ceiling from her head. Mm-hmm. And I think obviously that's been a that's been a change in the mm-hmm. in like the everything being changed back because it mm-hmm. was in her room as a baby and now it's mm-hmm. in the there, in that yeah. area. So I think she, I think she's going to just say like um uh I'll I'll join you guys and everything. Um, I just uh remembered uh remember the giant tree <gasps> that we saw <laughs> when we were she's looking over to integrity and was like when we were heading over to. Um, the evocation and for the tournament and everything, with after everything got you know put back to normal, that yeah. giant tree. Yeah, I think that was this my sweetling. <gasps> well, that didn't She's take very long grown. to grow. Yeah, mm. I. So I, I just want to check on it first, mm. just because want to make sure nothing like time crazy happened Maybe to it. Maybe the soil's it. just really rich here. Yeah, but that's the that's thing. It was in. It. It was in my dorm before mm. as a sweetling. You got nice, mm. you probably don't got nice soil in your room then, I guess. <laughs> so it left. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I just walked I out. I tried. I mean, to, I like, didn't really you know, see any like dirt in your room. So. It was in a pot. <laughs> it wasn't oh, just laying this. on the ground. What are you talking about? It was in the corner of my room. You got, it was there when we were doing <laughs> the lemon squeezing. What are you talking about? So, so you're maybe thinking you so, that someone maybe, planted it? I would recommend it? some, I would recommend some high quality mulch. Maybe that would help. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's already grown. So I don't think that's the so, worry anymore. I, know, well, the I just want to check on it. Plant. So, Mira, <laughs> you walk back and go, oh, Bailey, that guy. Anyways, you guys want to come with me to this forum? All your friends go, yeah, actually, I have a thing to do. And they all leave the evocation <laughs> department without you, uh, leaving you kind of like standing there Well, alone. I mean, I do say like, I'm going to meet up with you because like my thing <laughs> yeah, should be yeah, really quick. We're all going to meet up with her. They we're all not, like, promise to meet up with you. Her. After the forum. After your no, forum, I, yeah. My after the damage control. a couple control of minutes. I just want to check on it, see minutes, it's okay. It'll take that long. And then I'll come over with, and I'll come <laughs> so they, the three of them leave all together and then split off in their own ways. Integrity and Winsler going to the student store and, and Saren up going to check on maybe the sweetling near the garden. Maybe the sweetling. Uh, Mira, Delna stands here and will kind of like shrug and say, I, I mean, I was going to go try to get in contact with Intimati for you. So I also, m- m- I'll meet up with you at it's the forum. It's fine. Yeah, okay. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of. It's fine. Have Good fun luck, for one though. Star I'm sure you'll do reviews. great as she Thanks. walks away from you. <laughs> and so, Mira, as you walk across campus alone now, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, can all of you make perception checks for me as you walk across campus? This is to overhear potential rumors or notice fun things. I got 18. Uh, oh, shit. That is a total of That's 14. an unnatural 20. Nice. 14. Nice. Mira and Winsler, you both get 14. Uh, Winsler, as you walk along, you notice there's a thin, you notice the thinned out crowd here on campus. You notice, you notice much, many, you notice fewer vendor stalls as you, y'all do walk through Vendor Village. There's only two cider stalls now instead of the three. Uh, you do still see that there's a big, like, um, what's the thing where you, like, Try to get the apples in the water. What's it called? Apple bobbing. Bobbing Apple bobbing. There's a big apple apple bobbing bobbing stall still. Yeah, absolutely. That one's bumping today. Um, but you walk by. There's there's just fewer vendors here. Uh, Mira, as you walk by through Vendor Village, like alone, uh, by yourself, uh, you notice that there's very many stalls that are empty, as if to say many people are waiting are waiting for you at this incoming forum. 
Um, <laughs> signs posted up that says back in 15. Other signs posted that say back before end of day, this type of thing. Oof. I think that as you walk, you might only see in the in the quick two-minute walk over to the planar research department where this forum is being held outside of. I think, Mary, you only see like four stalls that have like actual people in them. Everything else is like shut down for like 15 minutes to 30 minutes. Got it. Okay. And we'll get to what you see in a second. Integrity, okay. you got a 17? 18. Okay, 18. And Serenup, you got an unnatural 20. The two of you, uh, as, or the Serenup, as you walk towards the greenhouses, which conveniently for your actual purpose of just being quick and then meeting your friend, they are very near the planar research department. Um, like they're up on a slight terrace. So you might even be able to just stand there and watch uh, Mira do very good public speaking if you wanted. Um, <laughs> or if that's even going to happen. Um, but while you're walking, you do overhear uh, there is a person kind of, they're coming from the gardens and they're talking to their friend. She's talking to her friend and she's like, did you see that tree back there? It like... It, like, really made me stop in my tracks. Like, it really took my breath away. Like, not in a weird way. You understand what I mean? Like, but just, like, it took, like, it was, like, you know? And, like, this she, is like. This Patreon <laughs> NPC. I love it. <laughs> uh, and her friend just, just, like, no, I don't understand what you're talking about. As they, like, walk the other <laughs> direction from you, Serenup. Uh, and you can approach the place where you'd seen that large tree. Uh, integrity, what you overhear is, uh, as, the, as you and Winsler enter into a small, cramped uh, student store, you hear two other people that are in the store itself that are kind of, like, on an aisle over. And you hear one of them go, do you think these shoes would be like good enough for the gala on on the, at the end of the festival? And another goes, I don't I don't know why you need new shoes. You can just wear the same shoe. And he goes, No, dude. Like if bro, like if I want to look great, and because I have to look great at the gala, you gotta buy like brand new shoes. And like I'm debating between getting these shoes and like the ones like if I get these shoes, is Christina gonna be like sick shoes, bro? Like let's do let's dance. <laughs> Or is she? Or is she gonna be like, those are kind of lame shoes, bro. Uh, and and like that's the worry that I personally have. Winsler, what's up? Um, so how are the <laughs> aisles sort of set up? Is there like a solid barrier between them, or is it kind of just like piled stuff? It's like piled stuff, side? and you could probably, if you took it out, you could see straight through. Okay, I wanna, people. I wanna like take out something from my side of the shelf and sort of like yeah. peek through and see exactly yeah. like what shoes yeah. they're looking he's holding, at. He's holding up like a pair of like what looks like very, very uh, shitty, uh, but like in a shitty in like a um, a way that has character, kind of leather, sh brown leather shoes that have like what look like spurs Anything on the back. Anything has character to oh me. My fucking God, yeah, exactly. Yes. They have like, they have like spurs on the back and goes like, I don't know if they're like, too rustic, you know, and like I don't know if that's my like the vision of what I want for this year at the gala. You know what I'm saying, bro? He goes, dude, you can literally just wear the regular shoes that you wear every day. No one cares what shoes you wear. He goes, no, you don't. You clearly don't understand because like if you understood integrity, as soon as I hear that the shoes do not matter, I'm going to <laughs> yell. I'm going to peek through like where Winsler is peeking yeah. through, and I'm like. <clears throat> Excuse me. And one of them turns and goes, oh, I'm so... And the other one goes, what do you want, dude? I'm trying... I'm, like, having a crisis of faith over here, bro. Uh, I would just like to say that shoes really matter. And I That's think that I'm the saying. shoes that you're looking at is very ugly. Try to look for oh. me. <laughs> well, yeah. I, li I like those shoes, though. They look, they look kind of nice. Oh. Are they too rustic? I don't know what that means, but they look nice to me. Like, they look like you'd wear them if you were, like... A cowboy? A cowboy, bro. <laughs> And, like, I don't know if that's what I want to put out into the world this year. I see some of the high-class people back home wear those on the, like, around the farms, you know? Oh, I dip? Guess. Really? Yeah. That's pretty fucking sick, dude. That's pretty much how you know if somebody's kind of, like, you, do you have any other, in like, the world, you know? Do you, oh, so it's, like, rich, rich folks wear these. Like, rich folks that are, like, down to earth and, like, you'd want, you'd want to, like, hang with them. You'd want to, like, dance with them, you know? <laughs> Is that, like, the fucking, th like, that's the energy of these things, right? I mean, I remember seeing my neighbor one day kind of dancing with his cow, so... I mean, if that's the kind of thing you're looking for, then... Is Christina a he cow? He looks stumped at that one. <laughs> <laughs> he looks fucking stumped at that one, and will turn to his friend and go, Bro, I don't know anymore. 
because <laughs> she said the shoes are important, and he says the sh- these ones are awesome, and like rich, cool people wear them that like get dances. But I don't want Christina to think like that you think she's a cow. <laughs> yeah, I don't want Christina to be like, yeah, I bought these shoes because a guy told me you can dance. People dance with people dance with farm animals when you wear them. Jesus his goes, Christ! His friend goes, dude, well, calm down. And what? he goes, he turns to you and Tegan goes, so like if these shoes are like too rustic and that's not what I'm looking for, what would you recommend? What's your size? I there's no common sizes in this world. It's kind of just measure the foot and get a bespoke shoe made for you. One size fits the, all. Yeah, I was gonna take these ones and go get my transmuter friend to like fit fit them to my feet perfectly. I'm going to stand Ooh. up and I'm going to walk up to their aisle and then I'm going okay. to be like, um, can you hand me your uh, your feet? My please? regular shoe. My you want me to hand you my foot? Like, how about I hand you my shoe and you can just use my shoe? Cause like. <laughs> I don't really want... You're a stranger to me, and, like, you seem like a young weirdo, like, and I don't really want that. Sorry, it's kind of, like, weird. No, you know? no, no, I come from a family of shoemakers. This is not weird. Oh, that's, yeah, that's all you had to say to make me comfortable about <laughs> handing me, like, giving you my foot. Here's my shoe, though, girl. Wow, and he what hands a coincidence. You, <laughs> he, he hands you his shoe. It's a plain shoe that anyone at Wildcliffe would wear, like a plain leather shoe. What what are you wearing? What do you mean? What am I? Like bro. To, the, to the gala? Oh, are you going to wear? I, tux well, I was or... choosing my I was choosing my feet footwear first, and then everything else after. I was gonna get something from the market stalls, like one of the vendors out there that was like, I saw this guy selling like really cool robes and like pants and stuff. Like they were really cool, but they're like closed right now, and I don't know when they're gonna be back. The sign says thirty minutes, but I. Like, bro, I don't trust those things, personally. I'm going to grab a shoe that I eye on, like, the top right. Um... <laughs> I eye Idleberry? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's like, a brown leather boot that okay. has, like, um, like, um, holes in them. Like, okay. you know, like, that, um, like, Croc boots. No. Crocs. You hand him no. a pair of Crocs. I was Leather thinking Crocs. that. <laughs> <laughs> no, like the like the ones that you would wear to like let's say um like Oxford shoes is how I would okay. describe it. Okay, okay, um, okay. Because like I've seen people buy it who's like um rich and pretentious and <sighs> sort of the vibe that this guy gives. Um, yes. His <laughs> slicked black his slicked back hair and popped uniform collar. Yeah. Oh, he's a piece of shit. Oh, he's, yeah. he's going to start snapping no. his fingers while walking down one of the hallways. Um, I think that this will fit your personality very well. It It's speaking to me that this oh. is the right shoe for you. Sick, dude. Thanks so fucking much. If like, you I never thought customized... that some rant... Oh, do you, can you do that? But yes. I, I, Like I said, I'm just going to go to my transmutation friend and get them like... Kind of like fit proper. So if I wanted it customized, I'd probably just bring it to my friend, like I said. Uh, but thanks for the offer. I'll. What's your name? Um, Integrity I Idleberry. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, you do great work here. I'm. Uh, they should really give you a promotion here at like the student uh, shop. Like you do you really ever, good work suggesting stuff. Um, if you ever drop by Dry Falls, you can also uh, yeah. visit. Gel- That's um, where I'm from, actually. What? <laughs> Yeah, I've, I'm, I live there, so like, oh, shit, I, I'm probably gonna be back there during the winter. Does he live in a shoe? <laughs> Who are you? Me? My name? I'm Vincent. Okay, Vincent. I guess Vincent the Kin. Vincent Pakin. Have you never? Yeah. Yeah. No, I've never heard of you. My family runs like a really fucking cool like smoke shop on Third Street. Oh. Oh yeah, I've I've never been there i don't think my family Pekin six smokes uh, <laughs> you've never heard of that ever everyone's in town sir. are you actually from dry falls or are you just pulling my leg i think she's pulling my leg dude and the friend looks at you integrity and he just like looks so fucking over this and he's like i'm so sorry for him like <laughs> i'm this is i'm you got you really i'm gonna we're gonna i'm we're gonna get out of your hair just like uh, yeah thank you so much okay. i'm so sorry Thank you. Bye. And like they go to the front counter. You hear his boisterous voice go like, "Brah, you like one of the attendants here at the shop. Like, help me find these. You should give her a raise." And someone, and like the fucking person at the front shop goes, "I'm the only one who works here. What are you talking about?" <laughs> um, <laughs> anyways, that went far too long. <laughs> Sorry. I love shoes Vincent, are important. The character. 
Yeah. It's amazing. That made me angry. <laughs> Shoes are important. <laughs> I'm sad we don't do MVP NPC on on TNT because <laughs> it would be Vincent that for guy? sure. Vincent <laughs> Dekin. De- 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 um. So, so, um. Very quickly, Winsler, what are you here at the student shop for? I wish to know if they provide silver vials worth at least four hundred gold pieces. Mm, silver or platinum? I think it's plat. It's, it's plat. It's plat- it platinum. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's platinum. I couldn't remember. Okay, platinum. Platinum Anyways, inlaid vial. You bra- you peruse the shelves here, Winsler. You arrive at the, the, the vials section of the store. There's glass ones. There's steel ones. There's silver ones. And there's gold inlaid ones. There is small little wooden placards that say, bring me to the front counter for the platinum inlaid uh, vials. Similar to like what you would get at Costco, right? Oh, okay, yeah. So the, Okay, yeah. I get it. Um, I want to do that. Okay, you grab one of these and uh, head to the front counter. A very disheveled-looking old man uh, stands here. Not old, like middle-aged, sorry. Like, probably in his, like, 40s. He has, like, a 5 o'clock shadow and is sitting on a stool and goes, Is that, how can I help you? I would, I would like to see if I could acquire one of these, please. And I slide the... Placard on the desk. Platinum inlaid vial. Uh, yeah, I think we have like three in stock. Uh, they'll run you six hundred and seventy gold. Pardon? Uh, we have three in stock. They'll run you about s- one. One vial will run you about six hundred and seventy gold. Integrity. Do they normally charge this much for stuff like this? Yes. <laughs> I'm very Why? surprised. We have to d- mark up our prices a little bit to to make back like the, our purchasing costs. That's so much money. Do you, do do. You, do you not have discounts? Uh, we have discounts for faculty. Um, this is professor. Your students. Um, oh. professor, professor Periwinkle. Walla, As, Walla, professor Walla, Professor Valley Periwinkle. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's your that, name. That's right. Yes. Professor Very Periwinkle. Um, <laughs> make a deception check. Oh no. Do I get advantage because integrity is assisting you? Yes, you can have okay. advantage because integrity is assisting you. This is not how I thought this episode was going to go. <laughs> okay, well, that was a 15. Ooh. Total? Yeah. Professor Very. Is that with an I or a Y? So with an I. Okay. Periwinkle. And the winkle has a Y in it. <laughs> okay. This is horrific. He takes a quick note. He goes, Professor Very Periwinkle. Are you new here? Like, are, are you just starting in the new year and, like, you're just coming and getting, like, accommodations and stuff? I've never heard of you. Uh, yeah. As he, like, reaches under the counter to, like, undo a little lockbox, he seems to, Winsler, believe the lie. Uh, and he, you can hear him fiddling with some keys, and he goes, so so you're new here? What department do you teach in? Um, I teach in um, the uh, evocation department. Oh, that's cool. I don't know anything about magic, but that's pretty neat. Yeah, so I'm I'm basically here early just to make sure everything's all up to up to snuff and everything, and uh, I'm not I'm not actually gonna be teaching until next next semester, but okay. I'm I'm really excited to just you know get a mm-hmm. head start on everything, getting like materials and everything ahead. Okay, so the professor's discount is fifty percent, uh, okay. so that'll be three hundred and what thirty five gold pieces. All right, integrity. Do you kind of do you have that kind of money? <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Y- you won like we won like four hundred something dollars and or four hundred something gold all. coins. And if I'm you gonna take it, I'm gonna take three hundred and thirty five gold pieces from the from the prize pool and I'm going to spend <laughs> okay. it. Okay, all right. <laughs> this Winsler was never discussed, takes, but whatever. Oh my God, three hundred. Listen, nobody told bucks. Winsler that we were gonna be splitting it. <laughs> That's, oh my yeah. god! Who would just assume you're splitting it? Um, Winsler takes it's, the money. It's from, on a needs basis, and Winsler exactly. wins on that. So Equity. Like, um, so Winsler, you pay the shopkeeper <laughs> money. Uh, he will hand you a small platinum inlaid vial. What does it look like? Um, I almost feel like it has like sort of like a diamond shape. Almost. Yes. Like the, like the, gl- like the glass comes into like a mm-hmm, very smooth, mm-hmm. like diamond shape. And like the top of it is sort of like got like a platinum streak mm-hmm. along like the outside and the yeah. inside. Uh, I imagined it almost like there looked like there was like webbing across it. Right. Like as yeah. if the, yeah, which is really cool. Um, like the molten uh, platinum poured onto almost like a hot glass. So it's like actually fused inside of it as opposed yeah. to just laying on top of it. And near the top or at the top of the flask, like on the lid, it's there's a stamped 
Crow Mercantile Corporation of uh, logo on it. Of uh, course. Winsler. Uh, and he'll slide it over to you, and he'll write a quick receipt to Professor Perry, uh, a very periwinkle of the evocation department, and slide it across to you uh, and say, just sign that. All right. And, well, yeah. I'll go ahead and sign it the best I can. Perfect. He'll take it back. He'll slide. He, he's sliding you the thing. And he'll say, all right, uh, if that's everything, I hope the professor, you have a great day. And I assume this is your, like, she's showing you around or something like that and just get, helping getting you sorted. So I hope that the two of you have a great day. Uh, if you need anything, the shop is here uh, to meet all of your uh, needs for supplies and everything. And if not, uh Mr. Horse Wrangler, just get in contact with him. He can get you anything. Uh, and just write him, uh, and it'll show up within a week. All right. Th- thank you for your time. No problem. Have a good one. And the two of you walk out of there. I am meanwhile, so sorry. <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> it's good. Meanwhile, <laughs> Serenep, you've ascended to... Uh, just period. Full stop ascended. Oh, my God. Uh, she did oh my it. Gosh, it died. <laughs> there um, she goes. Had the heart taste there. She got her wings and then she flew away. <laughs> Saren up, you ascend a, a little set of stairs up to the gardens. There's some uh, boxy looking greenhouses with their roofs shut and no water on the ground. There's a hummingbird statue that might have bad association associated memories with it. And there is near the one of the sheds in a little patch of dirt, a very Firmly rooted, bright colored tree. It has like green and purple bark and silvery bright leaves. It seems to be about 12 feet tall. Much oh. larger than the last time you saw it. D- very oh, different from the last time I saw it, yes. definitely. Yes, yes. Um, I think her main thing is, like I said before, just checking on it, making sure it's okay. Mm-hmm. I think Give me she a nature just... check. Yeah, sure. I think she just kind of wants a moment of like, hey, this thing kind of lived in my head. I kind of consider this one of my children at this point. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Oh, fuck yes. Oh, shit. 19. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. It seems... This is good. <laughs> it's very healthy, Saren up, And it seems that it's growing way too fast. Or not too fast. Way faster than you would assume a regular tree to grow. Um, mm-hmm. Like, it looks as if it is, like, a year old already. Right? Um, okay. Like, like, it has very um, thick developed bark and is growing tall. You don't know if that's a quality of it being magical and from Isithil or if it's related to, or actually with a 19, I think you would be able to assume it's the fact that you brought it from Isithil to the material plane and there might be something happening there where it's just gr- like some sort of, uh, like it's pulling in nutrients in a, in a way that's just uh, very advantageous for it. It looks healthy and good. I think in her head she's going to like make a note to Mm-hmm. Check out the library because she did want to look into mm-hmm. um, plants from Mississippi and like their growing Absolutely. patterns and everything. Like yes. any kind of like notes that Dessa's group had made thus yes. far, kind of thing. Absolutely. Before everything crazy happened. Yes. Um, I think she's as just you, like, yeah. Sorry. As you stand here watching it for a few moments, checking on it, being like, is everything good here? And like thinking about like, mm, I should really like read up about this so that I can like be more prepared for stuff like this happening. Uh, you hear it like there's almost like a rattling coming from above. Uh, like the, if it hits me in the, the head again, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> as like the branches like kind of intermingle, and it, it it's just like a very alluring sound, almost nothing like notable, but it, I I guess it's like the sound of a bunch of small trees clicking together in the woods, and it, it's interesting to hear that on campus when it's only the single tree alone, and it might just be a foreign sound to you. But beyond that, everything's good here. But the sweetling is. A firmly rooted next to this little shed. Yeah, that kind of brings to mind also what, like, the whole reason that um, Ira didn't want to go back, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the sound. Um, I think she just kind of puts her hand against the bar just to kind of, like, mm-hmm. I don't know, like, I... I don't know how to explain what Serenep's thought process of a lot of things when it comes to yeah. like like an emotional connection to like Absolutely. a physical object, especially a plant that's living. Like she just like as puts her you, hand against it. As you place your hand against it, there's a slight reverberation almost like if you were to like hit a drum and then put your hand on it Do you, does that make sense oh. um it's like, like a vibration there's a, to it yeah yeah um hmm. like gentle and like pulsing um almost reassuring i would say it, it, a very similar tone or energy of to what like being in the loft had like that very warm energy to it, it almost like flows into your hand through that like slow reverberation I think she kind of rests her head against it for a moment. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it's very nice. I um I think she just kind of I'm I'm happy that you're okay, and I hope that I'm able to help you grow more. Warm pulsating continues. Meanwhile. A nearby Serenept, just down a terrace, in a mm-hmm. small nook surrounded by a couple of buildings, uh, there are Mira Marchand. You see a small wooden stage set up. There's like a podium there with a little banner in front of it that has a fun logo that looks like like it's not used. You've not seen it anywhere else, but it's like Autumn's End Festival 954 Planning Committee Committee, like banner on the front of this little podium. There's like a little talking horn on the podium itself so that your voice is amplified. Uh, and there are 60 or so oh my God. vendors standing here. It looks oh like there's, cha- there's, there's chairs set up for like 20 vendors to be here. And everyone else is just kind of standing and like look very impatient as if you are running late. Um, oh. Standing by the stage, you see two other students. One of them has like short pastel kind of hair uh, and and they're wearing like suspenders and like an open button shirt and they just are like like really anxiously talking to this other student who is a uh, dark skinned guy he's kind of like about six feet tall and he's wearing a navy hat with like a yellow tassel on the side of it are these people I recognize from the they are in the planning committee and you would recognize the first one I described the one with the pastel hair, even though this, their hair is a different color now, it was like a pastel uh, greenish color or pinkish green uh, when you saw them last. But you would recognize them from the embroidery club. Uh, I don't know if you've ever spoken to them, though. They're like an upper year, upper year student, and they kind of keep to themselves. Um, and then the other do one. Do I know their name? Uh, you do know their name. Uh, their name is Bowen Blue Blight. Bowen Blue Light. Another B name. Mm-hmm. Love it. Yes. Uh, and then the other guy the other standing one. there uh, with the dark skin and the navy hat uh, with the yellow tassel. He's also in the planning committee. Um, Do I know his name? Arley. Arley. Yeah. R-L- A-R- A-R-L-Y? A-R-L-E-Y. Arley. Got it. Cool. Uh, anyways, the two of them seem to be quietly deliberating at the front near the stage. As you walk up, you can hear uh, uh, Arley go, I'm, I, if I go up there, I'm going to explain things and it's going to go, I'm just going to get carried away trying to answer their questions and I don't think anyone's going to come away satisfied from this. And then you hear Bone go, I, I, when I, if I go up there, I'm going to zone out completely. Like They're going to ask me a question and I'm just going to, I'm going to be like, I, oh, sorry, I super was not oh, listening hey to ask you. And they'll both look so reassured <laughs> when you show up, Mira, and they'll go, did Bailey send you? Bowen will say, uh, did Bailey send you? Uh-huh. Um, I'm here to answer the questions of the people, that, uh, who the vendors, the vendors who are worried. Arlie will go, great. That's awesome to hear. They're kind of a bit hot at this time of day. Uh, if yeah. you go up there, it's probably going to be a couple minutes, just a couple of questions. Uh-huh. Just tr- try to make it like... Make the school look yeah. good, make everyone happy, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. I've been doing a lot of making the school look good lately, so that's a good... I kind of feel like start. I'm being thrown under the cart here, but mm-hmm. uh, I'll do it. Welcome to the club, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, are, came, you, are, are you Bailey feeling the same way? Bailey showed up this morning to like, my dorm room and was like, hey, you've not come to any of the meetings at all? The I don't think meetings? those are real. I don't think those are real meetings. A bone will say, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it's just like an uh, a one person attendance kind of like meeting, you know? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I got the same vibes. Okay, good to know. Um I'll go up there and do what I can. Uh we got this. And I'm going to put my hand in and I'm going to go event planning committee. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Oh, they both just stare at her um, like... 10 plus... Uh, b- 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 17 total. Okay. Uh, Bowen will enthusiastically put their hand in and, and like with you. Arlie will more slightly reluctantly kind of put his hand in with that. And then you'll be like, event planning committee. Bowen, uh, enthusiastic, matching your energy completely. Uh, Mira kind of like mix that. And Arlie will quietly or, or quieter go, event planning committee. <laughs> Good luck, and he'll go Thanks. take a seat in the front row. Uh, yes, okay. I'm gonna go stand up in front of the horn, and like I'm gonna do that thing where like I tap it, and there's like horn there's feedback, feedback, even though and everyone not. like yeah. everyone uh. like winces. <laughs> Absolutely, is this thing on? Tap tap tap. Yeah, everyone go falls silent and turns to look at you standing there, Mira. Um, 
Hi everyone, my name is Mira Marchand. I'm a first year representative of the event planning committee and I'm Why here to address- Why they send a first year? And another person goes, shut up, she's in the middle of introducing herself. Uh, address <laughs> any questions or concerns that any of you might have. I would ask you to raise your hands and I will address them one by one, please. 60 people raise their hands in, in almost sync, Mira. Holy shit. With pitch yep. forks. I'm- uh, and if, uh, if if another person has a similar concern to you that is addressed, you may also lower your hand. And I'm going to point at a random person in the crowd. Okay. Uh, random person number one. They are, hmm, let's say a a dwarf with like, they don't have a beard and they are also bald. Uh, and they have like a shiny head and they go, hi, Herb here from Herb's Head Cream. Uh, I have a quick question. Um, why isn't anything being done? I reported a break-in at my stall three days ago and no one's done anything about it at all. And I'm pretty sure there was another one last night. Oh, um, to, to whom did you report this break-in? I reported it to the planning committee head and a couple of, like, just campus workers. People who were wearing, like, a crow uh, mercantile, like, uniform. They were doing some lawn work. They said, that's not our problem, Herb. And I said, make it your problem. I said the same thing to the head of the planning committee, and he seemed really flustered by that. And he hasn't done anything. Ah, When yes, I came here, I Crow told me, I, I've never been a vendor here, and when I came here this year, Crow himself told me, your headmaster told me, it's going to be amazing, you're going to get so many sales, and it doesn't matter if I'm making sales if I don't have product to push. So what's the deal? What's the hang-up? Why is there no security here? What's going on? Oh, right. Uh, we are. Uh, we have heard reports of um, the break-in, and uh, I think that this may have been an issue of telling it uh, to the wrong individual. We've had uh, similar concerns about the head of our event planning com committee, Mr. Bailey Blue, lately. If you report it to another member of the committee, they will, uh, they will get back to you. Next person, please. Uh, now I would like to open the floor up to the three of you, Ben, Carla, and Sam. Holy if you would like shit. to play a quick character and ask <laughs> us some sort of angry question as a vendor, please feel free to do so. Introduce yourself as oh the character, describe boy. what they look like, and then ask an angry question. <laughs> but before that, and I was just wanted to say that to give you guys a chance to think. Before that, Mira, make a persuasion check. Okay. This is a skill check just for you. Oh, that's okay. That's a bad persuasion check because I rolled a two. Plus uh, seven, which is a nine. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, so, as I said, this is a skill check. Uh, for an audience of one this time, Mira, because all your friends abandoned you, I'm very sorry. I didn't anticipate that happening to you. Um, but you have failed one of the three checks. Oh. If you fail two more, you will fail the skill check. Oh, no. Okay. Um, in that, in anyways, the, if anyone would like to take on the role of an NPC and ask Mira an angry question. I would like to ask an angry okay. Absolutely, question, Ben. Sure, yeah. So, like, a, a sort of tall uh, elf. Uh, mm -hmm. They've got, like, like a tied-back auburn hair. Uh, they, they've got glasses on, and they've got um, some piercing yellow eyes. They, they sort of, like, raise their hand almost like, <sighs> like, really, they seem pretty <laughs> frustrated compared to a lot yeah. of people. Oh, no. Um... So they raise their hand, like, tall, hoping yes. that they would be able to get picked. Yes. And then Mira, after answering this first question and kind of, like, stammering over her answer, then moves on and selects this individual. So they adjust their glasses a little bit and go, Hi, name's Nick from Nick's Knitting Emporium. <laughs> Listen. Hi, Nick. I, I only got here, like... A couple days ago, I got here late, I know, but you know, I was promised that I would get my stall. I would, I was promised a specific spot on the stall grounds, <laughs> and it was already filled by the time that I got there. I was prepared for that day to set up there, but I don't know what happened. Somebody moved into that spot. Now I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I've got all my equipment just lying around. I need a spot to get set up. Is there anything going to be done about this? I'm, I pretty much, you know, spent all, the entire time prepping for this and nothing's been done about it. <laughs> uh huh. Uh, uh, Luke, with skill challenges, correct me if I'm wrong, mm. but as, as far as I understand it, the principle is to uh, to use different skills yes. each roll. Is that I would, right? Yes. Great. If you want to use the same skill each time, you'll be rolling at disadvantage. If you use Great. new and fun because skills. Mira is yes. going to lie. Oh, um, shit. Lying. <laughs> um, yes. 
Thank you so much for, for bringing this problem to my attention. Uh, we did actually review uh, the, the seating map with all, all of your predetermined seating uh, preferences prior to the event planning. What I, I, what I understand happened is that uh, the current leadership of the event planning committee, uh, uh, Mr. Bailey Blue, um, had some last minute changes to make and some of you might not have been notified. Um, mm. I sincerely apologize on behalf of Mr. Blue. This is a very serious concern and I would highly recommend reporting said concern to our headmaster, Mr. Osei Crow. You can contact him by speaking to uh, Mr. Kenneth Horse Wrangler. Thank you. Make a deception check. Okay. <laughs> um, that is a 15 plus Ooh. seven, which is a 22. That is a success. Uh, this, this man with the yellow eyes, this elf, seems to be, mm, okay, all right, all right, cool. With that Satisfying answer. answer. <laughs> and he'll sit down unsatisfied in his chair. Uh, who else do you ask? What, what other questions get asked? Go ahead. A, uh, a human female <laughs> with, uh, short blonde hair, uh, is sitting kind of like closer to the back, which is kind of hard. So she has like stand up on the chair to like be seen <laughs> yeah. over the other people and like raise her hand high. And mm -hmm. she goes, hi, I'm Dorothy from Dorothy's Delicacies <laughs> and Delightful Desserts. Um, I... <gasps> talk i already talked to a couple of people about this they haven't really helped me um basically uh i sell lovely desserts and these stalls that i'm surrounded by are cutting onions and like meats and like the scent is overpowering my stall uh, i asked i talked to people on the first day and they said they were going to help me out with this but all i have been given since then are slight apologies and no one wants to come to my stall because it just reeks of onions everywhere and i tried talking to the people next to me they have not stopped oh um i i am i am so sorry ma'am um okay i i have a solution for you um if you would just um if you would just step over here i think i have uh an idea to make your stall uh slightly more visible so that more people can see and um address it so so if you could just step over this way, please. And what I'm going to do yes. is uh, I'm going to uh, strum some notes on my lyre. Mm. I'm going to cast Fairy Fire Ooh. on Dorothy over here okay. to make her bright, to make her illuminated in a bright green light. Okay, okay. Ooh. Um, roll an Arcana check for Ooh, me in that case. I thought case. it'd be performance. Roll a performance absolutely... roll for me then in that case. Fuck yeah, thank you. <laughs> Uh, 13 plus 10 oh my is God. a 23. Oh, that succeeds. So the entire time that uh, Dorothy is tell asking this question, telling this story, and then Mira, while you're presenting a solution, and while you do strum a note, people are like, wow, that's a thing that they can do? Magic sure is neat. There was like this very angry looking dwarf who was like raising his hand the entire time trying to get your attention. You see a name tag on his thing that says Orange Onions and Onion <laughs> Delicacies. Uh, and then the same thing written below in no or in Dwarvish or Dwarf. It's a very long name tag. But when you like cast Fairy Fire and like make... a Dorothy, sparkly and such. Uh, he seems to lower his hand. He looks angry, but you're not sure if that's just his resting face. You succeeded one okay. more time. Uh, All right. Next question. Yes. Um, excuse me. It's um, it's an orange tabaxi um, <laughs> sitting in, or standing at the back um, with their hands sort of like crossed <laughs> and <back>. angry. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm actually not a vendor, but... <laughs> Uh, who are you? <laughs> who are you? But um, I he I'm here because I work for the newspaper, um, and I'm supposed oh to be reading the different stalls, but the stalls do not have anything. Um, they're supposed to be out there, but there's no one out there, and that's a big problem because how will I do my job? So hurry up. Um. Um, I am so sorry, ma'am, but this forum is for vendors only. We are actually addressing some very important concerns for some vendors, and so I would politely like to request that you leave. That's very rude. Damn. What, 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 what check is that? I'm trying to be intimidating. Okay, make oh. it intimidating. Intimidating, <laughs> as one would say. Intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> make, make the roll, please. Uh, what is that, a six or a nine? That's a nine. Ooh. Plus... Five, which is a 14. I don't know if that succeeds or not. That is a failure. Oh, um, shit. Fuck. More people in the crowd. Okay. One other person in the crowd goes, yeah, I can't sell things if I'm here. Why are you so slow? What? I have a question. And they'll put their hand up and they say, what took you so long? Why did you take so long to get here? Aren't we a priority here? What were you doing? That was such a big deal. It's a small um, gnome with a big, deep voice. Um... 
okay, well, I, I actually arrived as soon as I was able to. Um, I was I was informed by Mr. Bailey Blue of this event like five minutes ago. Uh, he he's actually busy. Um, he's actually busy dueling right now, so that's why you probably didn't um hear from him. Um, but look, um, maybe uh uh uh, you know, um, it uh. It, um, and I think that what I'm gonna do. <laughs> you see in the front row, Arlie's like going like, no, no, stop! You're, you're dying out there, like, like cutting, putting his hand against his throat, like, stop, stop! <laughs> yeah, and what I'm gonna try to do is I want to like try to see if I can like look at this person and figure out like what they are selling or something mm. to see if I can find some kind of angle to like mm, mm, push mm. that this is okay that they've been waiting so long. Absolutely. Like, there's some kind of. Making in what would that what percep would you rather a perception or investigation in that case? Uh, I feel like either one. Or probably an works insight. Here. Sure. Make an insight. They, check. I have a. They have the same bonus to all. Oh, three, make an so insight check. Then I think that's okay. the best one. Oh fuck! That's a twenty. Oh, plus oh. Three. saved. Nice. Uh, so in this case, you see that they are wearing a uh, hat, like a trucker cap, almost with like the mesh back that says "Table Rental Enterprises." <laughs> Oh, oh so my tables is, is their form. Tables God. is their, yes. <laughs> and they go, my entire business relies on renting out different stalls and tables to people. And while I'm here, I cannot do that. And, like, building on what you said earlier to answer that question, like, if people aren't actually getting their stalls here, then I rented them tables and they can just put those wherever. And what if they get damaged by people running in the streets and breaking them or stepping on them or cutting meat on them. I told them, don't cut meat on my tables. I, hey, did you hear that? And they, like, stand up. They're making a big scene here, Mira. Um, okay, well, the fact that your business is table rentals is mm. actually very good for the current timeline because uh, there are duels timeline. currently going on because uh, huh, not that kind of timeline. There's duels going on right now. <laughs> so most people are actually currently in the dueling area, which is why we decided to hold this forum during the duels, which may have taken us a little bit of more time to get back to you, but it also means that it is currently a low traffic area during Vendor Village because everybody is at the evocation department, and so there is oh. far less likelihood that anything will happen to your tables, and that is why, uh, despite a, a little bit of waiting, for which we apologize, we decided to hold it during this particularly opportune time for your, your business because we care about you. Oh. Mm. Thanks for the answer. And they'll sit down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then a final person kind of okay. raises their hand tentatively. Everyone else seems to be minorly quelled. There's a couple of people still murmuring under their breath. Uh, you get a short thumbs up from Bowen in the front row, uh, Mira. But one person raises their hand. It's like an old uh, Aarakocra. And okay. he will say, hello. Um, a minor issue to present here, but... My tent was lit on fire a few nights ago, and oh I reported it. Or more accurately, I think the people next to me's tent had some sort of horrible accident happen. There was a fire or an explosion of some sort. My tent was set on fire also, and a few of my instruments inside were damaged. Oh, and so that's horrible. I, I was just wondering, has there been any investigation about what's happening there? or And is there a chance that I can be r r compensated for the damage to my instruments? They're all hand-built, and I, I spend quite a lot of time and m my own money and energy um, building each one. Each one is a very important kind of journey for me as a person, and so damaging one of them is, 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 is just destructive to my own livelihood. I can't make that many in a year, so uh, to have three or four ruined in a night and no one do anything is very scary and worrying for me and, and, and kind of makes me think I won't be coming back next year for the Autumn's End Festival. Uh, so do you have any, any anything to say on that? Oh, I, I am so sorry those things happened to your instruments. That is awful. Um, you know, I will personally investigate that. Um, forget all this other stuff about the event planning committee. Um, you know, I will look into that myself, and I, I, I mean, I don't know entirely what I can do, but if some of your instruments are damaged, um, I have some spare strings in my dorm that you can use to restring some of your instruments. Um, I, I have a little bit of wax that I use for my own lyre. Um, uh, I'm a musician myself, um, mm. so, as I'm sure you saw from the, 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 the light magic before, um, 
So, you know, as long as you would be willing to, to put in a word when you're submitting your feedback at the end that, you know, Mira Marchand, uh, first year student helped you out, I would absolutely be happy to, to supply any of my own musical, you know, maintenance gear if that can help you out in any way. What check do you want to make here? Mm, that's a good question. Kindness. There's no kindness <laughs> check, right? But that would be There's it. no kindness check. Heart. We're not, uh, we're, yeah. Survival. Uh, we're not playing the, the, the RPGs where, where, where kindness is a skill. Yeah. So probably that's just like persuasion or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. Since you didn't use it last time, you don't have a disadvantage. But, okay. you know, this might be the last okay. one. So. Okay. Actually, either way, it's the last uh, one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a nine, and my persuasion's a seven, so that is a 16. Okay. <laughs> uh, this Arakakra will kind of like gently rock his head back and forth, and he'll say, that would be, if you wanted to come by, I, I'm sure I'm sure you know how to find the stall. Um, and he'll flip through his notes because he didn't actually fucking remember to write down the name in recent history. What a He's silly Arakakra. I can't remember his own name. He just has like he has like his like um his clipboard of like his inventory. He looks like, at his hand. The, he looks at his like feathered hand. My... <laughs> but his hands, but his but his, his palm was like very sweaty. And so <laughs> it's all it's he's just trying to read it. <laughs> What's my name? Uh... I don't remember. Ah, uh, he'll go. Um, be sure you can just come over to string it. Uh, it should be fairly easy to find. I think it's the only. Uh, a musical instrument stall on on at the festival of this year. The other people passed away. Uh, so <laughs> oh, it's just oh. me now. Well, um, a tragic accident. That's sad. But, uh, but I'll yes, be sure to write. I'll be sure to write down your name when I'm talking about how how you helped. Uh, and other people kind of murmur in agreement. And go, this this Mira Marchand girl. She's pretty good at this. Um, and then another one goes. Yes. But Bailey Blue did run a pretty great opening, like opening remarks ceremony, like the first day of the festival. Another one goes. It lasted three hours. And down um, in front. Um, that's right, everyone. When you are passing your feedback on to Headmaster Crow via Kenneth Horse Wrangler, make sure to mention that you were helped out by Mira Marchand and also by Bowen Bluebright and Arlie, two very valuable members of the event planning committee. And if you have any concerns regarding the management of a Mr. Bailey Blue, make sure to pass those on as well. We will make sure we hear all of them. Thank you so much, everybody, for airing your concerns. Yeah. Uh, and so people, people clap. Uh, in happiness as you've succeeded in your skill challenge, Mira. Mira. Um, and Mira. as everyone kind of gets up to disperse, the three of you are arriving and kind of hear the murmuring of the crowd go, Mira Marchand, pretty good at that kind of stuff. I wonder if she's going to replace Bailey after he gets like, after he like graduates. And another one goes, nah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why are you talking to me? Uh, yeah. I wonder if she'll replace Bailey after he croaks. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, wow, I can't believe Bailey is actually loud in disguise. I can't oh believe my you spoiled God, it, Ben. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, while you're like winding down from that mirror uh, and like walk, you walk down from the small podium that you were standing at. Uh, Bowen walks over and he goes, "That was amazing. That was like." A thousand times better than how we would have done. Arlie goes, it was probably ten times better than what I would have done, but it was still really good. You were, you were dying on stage there for a couple of minutes, yeah. but like yeah. trying to get your feet. But I, I feel like you did a, a, a good enough job, kind of like getting a handle on everything. Oh, thanks. Well, I, I'm sure you guys would have done a great job as well. Um, so, um, by the way, um, there are the event planning committee. There's, uh, mm -hmm. there's elections next year, right? Uh, yeah, there's elections at the start of every kind of like spring yeah. semester. Uh, Bailey yeah. was president this year and last year. Uh, we're both fourth mm -hmm. years and we didn't try to run for it because like, fuck that. Uh, it's a fair, lot of work. Fair. And But like, mm -hmm. I mean, Bailey's going to be a fourth year next year, so he's still like eligible for it. Um, mm -hmm. But but if, I don't know. Like, Yeah, no, I was... I was just curious. Well, thank you guys so much for your help. You know, you're both also very valuable members of the event planning committee, and um, hopefully we won't have to deal with anything like that again. They both nod, knowing in the backs of their heads that it, something else will probably will come up. Um, <laughs> yeah. As the th other three of you uh, arrive here, you see the crowd kind of leaving and how the general happy sentiments among them. Um, uh, Serenap, you probably watched from, like, that terrace up there by the greenhouses like oh Mira's doing a great job right like I'm here in moral support but she doesn't really need it at all I think right? she tried like waving down to be mm -hmm. like 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 hey I know I'm not down there physically but like I am watching kind of thing 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then Winsler, you with your platinum inlaid vial and integrity idleberry, you not with a platinum inlaid vial, but much less money in a small little pail, uh, can wander up here as well. And I think that uh, as a couple of people are still leaving, and uh, Mira has you have this conversation with uh, the other two planning member midi planning committee <laughs> members. <laughs> <laughs> planning member. Uh, um, you would all hear a buzz noise, not a buzz, like a pulsing. Uh, you can make either Arcana or Perception checks if you wanted to know further sure. what that might be. Arcana. <laughs> Everyone's yes. walking up. Sarah's like, "You did great down there." Yeah. <laughs> Um, let's do Arcana. Not that the, the skill difference matters, but that's a 15, 15, 16. Perfect. Holy shit. That is a 22. 22. What was the thing that you... Arcana or Perception? 10. 10? <laughs> Don't you have like a plus 10 to Arcana? I have plus 7. Oh my god. I have a 3. You get new dice. Let's do <laughs> Perception 20. Okay. Ooh. Uh, Mira and... Mira and uh, Serenup. Serenup, yours was an Arcana also, I assume? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. You two recognize that like pulse sound as like some sort of Mira. You would recognize that as just some sort of teleportation ish magic, adjacent magic. Uh, mostly, I think you would just think about like this morning or last night when you went to the Raythrin estate, right? Like that like, same kind of like whoosh, like pulse kind of noise. Uh, Winsler, you are very into this. Like your brain is just running through all of the rest of the stuff for this one spell now that you have the component to get like the one, like mm -hmm. the, the one you needed so badly. Uh, so you, you take not a intense note of that pulse and don't really think much on it. Serenup, that is a pulse of of a uh, like planar transportation orrery. Uh, you hear it coming from the planar research department right next to where all of you are now standing, where this uh, damn it, guys. presentation, back, where this over. forum was occurring. Uh, integrity, you, with your perception roll, uh, hear the sound of like people uh, walking up steps in the planar research department. You hear the sounds of... Si um, let me count. Six pairs of feet walking up stone stairs. Hmm. And that's where we'll pick up next time, I think. Hmm. Very hmm. interesting. Hmm. Yes. Our hmm. friends um, are back. It's Team Vacuum, and they brought a friend. Yes. Who could that be? Uh, Carla, could know. you do an outro for us? <sighs> it's been too <laughs> long. Um, <laughs> well, what a surprising turn of events, wasn't yes. it not? Um, hope yes. that you all enjoyed this week's episode. Don't forget to leave a rating and a review on our iTunes or wherever you listen to our podcast. It really matters a lot. Mm -hmm. It does. Or if you don't want to comment or anything, please share us with people you know, friends or mm -hmm. not. If um, you really <laughs> like us. Strangers on the street. Hey, you want to do a podcast about D&D &D school? <laughs> yeah, do it. We also have a Discord server. Oh, wait, no. We have a Twitter and Instagram at Trials and Trebs. You should all give that a visit. You can mm -hmm. see art and also teasers before the episode comes out on the Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. If you make art or if things related to our show, tag us in it so that we can see it and share it around, retweet it, uh, think about how cool it is that people listen to our show and interact with it in such a way. It's fun. And then cry about it. And um, then cry about and it. And we also have a <laughs> Discord server where there's mm -hmm. a bunch of cool people that um, talk about the podcast or not whatever they want to talk about um and you can find the link to that in the episode description and last but not the least we are knocking <laughs> to your heart i'm kidding um <laughs> carla <laughs> What? We have She's a Patreon. If yes. you are feeling extra generous, it is not mm -hmm. necessary, but it is much appreciated. Yes. Where you can provide us with monetary support um, mm -hmm. so that we may support our lives. That's the way it goes. <laughs> <And> the podcast. <laughs> There's bloopers, you can read notes, or you can even make a Patreon NPC, such as Arlie or Bowen, uh, made by Lucasite and Rowan, respectively. Thank you both so much for making those characters. They were very fun. Um, thanks, everyone, for listening this week. I hope you had fun. We went on a big detour from where I expected to be gone. And uh, maybe that'll left. happen. Hard left turn with a f scene I was having too much fun. Uh, anyways, <laughs> see you all next week. Bye. 
Bye. Bye. Bruh. Bruh. Bruh.